This video is going to be an in-depth look at the new cosplay. There will be colour mixes, baked and unbaked samples, flexibility tests with and without mixing in other brands of clay, as well as comparing sculpting with coloured clay versus painting onto grey clay. I will have timestamps pinned to the top of the comment section so you can go straight to a specific part of the video. And here is a quick overview of what I will be covering. First up, we'll be checking to see if there's any colour shift between the baked and unbaked samples. Then we'll look at saving some money by only having to buy colours that we need and mixing the rest. We will then take a look at the very basic colour mixes with the black, white and fairy light. I will show you my in-depth colour coding system and how I keep track of my colour mixes. We will also go through a flexibility and strength test with different ratios of cos clay mixed with other brands of clay. My favourite part of this video will be going over all 64 of these beautiful colour mixes, of which 29 are solely cos clay colour mixes and the rest are mixed with various other brands of clay. A quick little section for if you are just wanting to grab a block of Primo Pearl and Graphite to mix in with your cos clay. I will also do a part entirely for sculpting in grey and seeing how well that paints. There will also be a section for looking at how well the fairy light takes on mixing in pigments. And finally, I will wrap things up with my thoughts and opinions on cos clay. Part 1. Colour Shift With some brands of clay, there can be some colours that get darker or lighter after being baked. But after testing all the cos clay colours, I am happy to say that there is no colour shift whatsoever. Part 2. Saving money. When I am buying clay, I like to get as little amount of blocks as possible because it does start to add up. So if there is a colour that I can mix and have it pretty close to the original, I then know that I don't have to worry about buying that colour again in the future. Let's start at the beginning with our three primary colours as well as the black and white. I want to see just how close we can get to that original orange by using the red and the yellow. Three parts yellow to one part red ended up being so close to the original orange and I am very happy with that. Let's take a look at mixing that green. I start by using a 1 to 1 ratio, compare that to the raw green, trying a 3 to 1 ratio. We have the original green in the middle, the 1 to 1 ratio on the left, and the 3 to 1 on the right. The 1 to 1 is a closer match in colour, just less saturated. The saturation is something that we cannot change. We can make the colour lighter by adding in some white, but that will only make it lighter and not more saturated. We can, however, mess with the saturation slightly by adding more of the yellow, because it is a more saturated colour. But as you can see with that 3 to 1 mix, that it very quickly changes the hue. I don't want to digress too much, but I will add in a screenshot of the hue saturation lightness panel from Photoshop. And if you like, I can go into more detail on this in a future video. With all clay companies, the green is something that I always buy. No matter the combination of blue and yellow, I just can't achieve that nice saturated green. For a bit of a visual representation, here is a Primo turquoise test with both zinc yellow and cadmium yellow. The greens are still nice, but none match that bright saturation of the original Primo green. Primo also has an ultramarine blue, which I tested with both of the yellows as well. They have also recently reintroduced their cobalt blue, which they should have never removed from the market in the first place, but that is a whole nother story. I am placing the orange in the don't need to buy pile and the green in the do need to buy pile. Now let's see if we can make that purple. The large ball is the original purple, below is some various ratios of the red and blue. In this lighting looking through the camera, that first purple looks close but is actually quite a bit darker. I like that middle purple and I definitely see myself using it in the future, but I am still going to buy that original purple as well. That grey is going to be quite easy to make with the black and the white. Three parts white to one part black looks good. I will still be buying the grey because I also sculpt larger figures that I then paint. But if you only sculpt with coloured clay, then you can move the grey over to the don't need to buy pile. 
Moving on to the brown and looking at my reference sheet, I can see that mixing in a bit of black with the orange would be a good starting point. But since we have put the orange in the don't need to buy pile, we will go with a mix of yellow, red and black. Four parts yellow to four parts red to one part black. It's not like the original brown, but I really like this mix. So I can now add the original brown to the don't need to buy pile. Let's drag the purple and green down with our three primary colors along with black and white. I'm going to keep fairy light and move angelic rose and warm beige into the don't need to buy pile. Here I'm just checking my green and purple mixes. Yes, I'll be getting those again in the future and the gray I'll be getting as well. Quite happy to be saving on four blocks of clay. Part three, basic color mixes. On the far left, we have a ratio of one part black to seven parts original color. The second row is the original color. The third row is one part white to one part color or 50% white. The fourth row is three parts white to one part color or 75% white. The far right is seven parts very light to one part color. I really liked how these colors turned out. Part four, color coding system. First up, I like to bake a sample square of all the original colors. I also give them their own unique letter, number or symbol for easy recognition. I keep large pieces of original colors in an easily accessible container. And I also have a separate container for all my new color mixes. All of my color mixes get documented in a book and I tend to keep the different brands separated whenever possible. I start with the unique number on the left, the ratio on the far right for easy reference and my color mix description in the middle. Instead of having to write the color out each time, I make up a cheat sheet. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple and white are the obvious ones. I use K for black like they do with printer cartridges because another B would be far too confusing. I use a percent symbol for gray because it reminds me of 50% gray in Photoshop. For fairy light, angelic rose and warm beige, I went with LMT for light medium tan and C for brown because it looks like chocolate. I use the same size cutter for all sample pieces. I have these small letter stamps I got from eBay years ago. We have a new container just for our cosplay color mixes. And just for reference, here is my other color mixes for some of the other brands. Part five, strength and flexibility. So we know that cosplay is strong and flexible, but I am very curious to see how strong it makes other brands of clay by mixing in different ratios. In the first group on the far left, we have 100% cosplay. We then have a one-to-one -one ratio of 50% cosplay and 50% Primo. Thirdly, we have a seven-to-one ratio with seven parts Primo to one part cosplay. And on the far right, we have 100% of either Primo, Primo Accents or Montmartre. I will specify which one when we get to that. Let's start with the purple. First thing I notice is that the cosplay stands up nice on its own. Lightly moving them to start with, touching one of the branches to the base, moving it around and then scrunching it in my hand. Moving on to the one to one ratio, one part cosplay to one part Primo purple, moving it around, scrunching it. Now let's try the seven parts Primo to one part cosplay. This one is 100% Primo purple, moving it around, scrunching it in my hand. All of the little purple tree samples have held up nicely to scrunching, but the cosplay definitely stands up better on its own. Let's move on to the orange sticks. They all consist of the exact same amount of clay and were all rolled out to the same length. Starting with 100% cosplay, I am seeing if I can touch either end together. Easily done. 50% cosplay with 50% Primo Accents Sunset Pearl. Seven parts Sunset Pearl to one part cosplay. 
and 100% Primo Accents Sunset Pearl. I'm going to repeat that, but this time running my fingers up the length of the clay. Here we have the one to one ratio and the seven to one ratio, seven parts Primo to one part Cosclay. This is a bit stiffer, but it is still holding up. Here we have the 100% Primo accents. Now let's straighten them all out and see what sort of damage has been done. The more cosplay in the mix, the straighter they return, but all samples have held up nicely. Moving on to the green unicorn horns. The cosplay was a bit stiffer to work with than the Montmartre lime and I didn't get as nice of a twist, but let's see how the brake test goes. One, two, three, four bends. One, two, three, four bends. One, and brake. One, and break. Let's twist the two that held up to the first test. 100% cosplay. Unwind. Unwind. One part cosplay to one part Montmartre lime. It's a bit stiffer, but both of these hold up nicely. Let's test these thin circles. 100% cosplay. One part cosplay to one part Primo. Oh, come on, focus. Seven parts Primo Accents to one part cosplay. 100% Primo Accents Graphite Pearl. Let's go through all of those again, but this time pinching them in the middle. One to one ratio. Seven to one ratio. 100% graphite pearl. Oh. Let's go again, pinching as hard as I can. This is the 100% cosplay, one to one. Seven to one. 100% primo. I am really curious about this leaf or petal test. When I sculpt my captured critters, they are covered in hundreds of leaves and sometimes those leaves snap at the tips. Now I have found that to usually be the case when I mix in more than 50% translucent. And I noticed in these tests with Cosclay that some of the Primo accents with a high translucent mix tend to snap more easily than mixed with a solid color like that strong purple test that worked out really well at the beginning. I'm going to hold the flower in the center and flex the ends of the petals around. One to one ratio, seven to one ratio, and 100% Primo Turquoise. Back to the 100% Cosclay and brushing the petals as hard as I can. One to one ratio, seven to one ratio, and 100% Primo Turquoise. Moving on to the red coils. Starting nice and gentle, one to one ratio, seven to one ratio, 100%, oops, broke already. 100% Primo Accents Red Glitter. Let's go back to the beginning and stretch it right out. One to one, seven to one and snap. 100% Primo and easily snap. The Primo red glitter has a high translucent base to it, so that could have been the reason why it snapped so easily. Cosclay on the top and one to one ratio on the bottom, squishing them around and they both held up nicely. The final bending test with the yellow. We have the 100% Cosclay, 
1 to 1 ratio, 7 to 1 ratio, and 100% Primo Accents Gold. That's a straight up snap. Let's go through them again. Pinch, pinch, 1 to 1 ratio, pinch, pinch, 7 to 1 ratio, pinch, pinch and break. 100% Primo, straight up break. Let's go again, this time pinching as hard as I can. 1 to 1 ratio and we have a break. Part 6, 64 colour mixes. 29 of these colours are solely cosplay mixes and the rest are a combination of mixing cosplay with other brands of clay. I will put all of these colour recipes over on my website so that it is easier for you to mix them up for yourself. I will link that in the description box below. Part 7. Pearl and Graphite If you wanted to grab a block of Primo Pearl and Primo Graphite to add to your cosplay, you will be very happy with the look of the colours that you can create. Part 8. Issues and Fixes I only really came across one issue throughout my testing and it's not purely a cosplay issue but it is still something I noticed and was somewhat problematic for me. When mixing in cosplay with another brand the clay would get very soft and sticky even if both clays are a medium blend and are nice to work with on their own after mixing about a one to one ratio the clay becomes almost unusable to me. What I did to resolve this issue was after mixing the colour I wanted, I would set the clay aside for a while to let it settle and cool down, then it was a bit easier to use. Part 9. Grey Cos Clay Painted My last sculpt was of an Ovipets character called Slime. I will have a full sculpting tutorial on this one going up in a week or two. I really enjoyed working with this clay for this kind of sculpt and because of its strength and flexibility I am able to make long, thin and delicate pieces without the risk of it breaking. I use cheap acrylic paints at this point in my life because I can't afford fancier ones yet but the sculpt looks great and it took really well to the paints. This clay was also cheaper than my usual clay and it is far better so for me this is now my go-to clay for these kinds of sculpts. Part 10. Adding Shimmer Pigments For the base of all these mixes I used Cos Clay Fairy Light. Mixing in the pigments takes a while so I ended up only testing four of the colours that I own. I took an even section of each colour, rolled them out to the same length and then baked them. If the clay was more translucent I am sure the shimmer would have been more obvious. I also gave them a good bend just to make sure the pigments didn't affect the integrity of the clay. Part 11. My thoughts and opinions. Firstly, I think Cosclay really needs to add a few extra colours to their line and in my opinion these would be my top four to add in. Definitely a translucent, I personally add that into almost every colour I use. A light and dark pearl like Primo's Pearl and Graphite, they can be mixed in with any and all colours and they are really nice to have on hand. For the fourth colour I would choose a highly saturated fluorescent pink. Cosclay is completely missing a pink from their line and the best you can mix is a pale pink by either adding white or fairy light to the red. A bright pink makes some of the nicest purples when mixed with blue and it also mixes beautifully in with red and oranges to make those lovely sunset colours. So translucent, bright pink, pearl and graphite would be my top picks if they were to expand their line. They are apparently planning on adding new colours in the future so fingers crossed for that. My second opinion is that some of their colours need to be more saturated. If this clay is going to eventually replace my current clay, then I need those more vibrant colours. Cosclay has some pictures up on Instagram and their website of these colours and they look more vibrant to me on screen than they do in real life. I know different monitors and screens can show colour differently, but I have looked on both mine and my husband's computer as well as our Android phones and my Apple iPad. 
or maybe they have changed their color recipe, which I would be really pleased about. Let's take a look at cosplay colors besides some other brands. Primo has a red called Cadmium Red, which also matches Kato Polyclay Red, and a deeper red called Pomegranate. The Pomegranate is very similar to Cosclay's Red, so I'm very happy with the red. Orange. I'm very fussy with the oranges that I use and mix. For me, orange can very quickly turn muddy and off-putting. Kato Clay is a great comparison because it also comes in a limited amount of colors like Cosclay. As you can see, Kato Clay is far more vibrant. Primo and Sculpey have a bit too much yellow in their oranges for my liking, but I just add a pinch of red to those. And Cosclay, again, is lacking in that vibrancy. But if you add a pinch of yellow to their orange, it bumps up the saturation and makes it a much nicer orange. Here I have Primo's Cadmium Yellow and Zinc Yellow. Kato Clay is almost a combination of those two yellows and Cos Clay is almost identical to Primo Cadmium Yellow. I'm really impressed with the amount of saturation Cos Clay Yellow has. Cos Clay's green is lacking in saturation. It has a chalky look to the color that makes me feel as if there is too much white added into the mix as well as the hue being ever so slightly pushed towards the blue, giving it a light teal look opposed to a true green. I still actually really like this green, but I would also like to see a more true green like Kato or Primo has. The blue is quite nice. It is slightly lighter than Kato's blue. Primo's Ultramarine is not a fair comparison. I wish I had some cobalt blue on hand. Ultramarine blue has a touch of red in it, bringing it closer to purple. This becomes more obvious when making color mixes when adding in yellow, but that hasn't got anything to do with cosplay, so I won't go into that. Primo purple bakes slightly darker, so I brought out the baked sample. Cosclay, Primo, and Kato's purple are all entirely different. That boost of saturation, again, is really needed, but this is still a really nice purple for adding white or blue to create those nice lavender, wisteria, and periwinkle colors like Primo, but not so much for your violet type colors. If Cosclay brought out a bright pink, then adding a bit into the current purple would be a lovely violet mix. Cosclay is missing pink from their line. I don't always use pink on its own, but I am always adding it into my color mixes. This is a color that I would really love to see them add to their line. As far as the gray clay goes for sculpting, it's perfect. And like I said earlier, this is now the only clay I will be using for this kind of sculpt. All in all, I really do love the strength of the formula that Cosclay has created and I will definitely be continuing to use it and mix it in with my other clays to add some strength to them. Just really hoping for a redesign with the saturation of some of the colors in this line. If I've left something out or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video or found it somewhat helpful, then give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give me a thumbs down if you like, but either way, I hope I see you next time.